True Detective has been renewed for season five at HBO. Issa Lopez will return as showrunner. Is this a good move? Is this a bad move? We'll talk about no, this in a little bit. Move. There's a lot to get into. There's some drama. Plus, we're going to have Vex's comments on the show as a whole at the end of this video. This is going to basically be talking about Issa Lopez returning, the drama between Nick Pizzolatto and Callie Rice, and then our thoughts on True Detective Night Country as a whole. So Variety tweeted out that season four star Callie Rice called it a damn shame after franchise creator Nick Pizzolatto reposted fans who hated the Night Country finale. Quote, but hey, I guess if you don't have anything good to share, shit on others. It's the new wave, lol. And then she reposted that tweet saying, I said what I said. Shrug. If you want to know what he said and what he reposted, here you go. This is what the drama is all about. So this all comes from Variety. And they say that Pizzolatto found himself in hot water after reposting comments to his Instagram story that slammed the show as disrespectful and insulting and a hot mess. So this is the first run of True Detective that he was not involved with, even though he was still credited as an executive producer. Here's some more stuff that went on with the drama. So originally he dissed Night Country in since deleted Instagram comments, calling season four's ties to his first season so stupid. He also told one fan, I certainly did not have any input on this story or anything else. Can't blame me. More controversy was generated after the Night Country finale aired. Pizzolatto reposted comments made by several fans who were outraged with the finale and its lazy, nonsensical resolutions. One fan that got reposted claimed that Lopez had butchered Pizzolatto's original writing given the connections between Night Country and the first season of True Detective. So we actually have a perfect way to look at this here so jules has not seen season one and i think i have not that's an interesting way to look at it i seen it i love it i think it's one of the best seasons of any show ever made season one it is that good it's up there with season three breaking bad season five breaking bad and season one of fargo for me i think they're all top tier seasons of a show obviously this season in my opinion wasn't nearly as good You'll hear our comments at the end of the video on why. I've heard yeah. nothing but rave reviews about the first season. Honestly, anything's going to be better than this one. I've heard the other side of the coin on this too. Some people were like, well, I didn't see the first season and I thought this season was great. So it's like they didn't get the top tier. So they thought this was fine or serviceable. So it's interesting. You're kind of having a reverse effect with mm, it. Yeah. There were so many plot holes. There were so many unanswered questions. There was so much shit that just didn't make sense. And people are right. It was lazy. It was sloppy. All right. Me, I'm kind of in the middle. I did enjoy episode five a lot. Episode six, the finale. Didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. I thought some of the scenes were really cool, especially when they all came in with guns. <laughs> And we saw what happened to the scientist. I thought that was really cool. But you're right. There was a lot of plot holes, a lot of unanswered questions. We never fully got the answer of what happened to Holden. We didn't truly get the answer of what happened to Navarro. That's left up to interpretation. Some people like that. What do you guys think? Do you think that's okay? Let us know in the comments. Are you okay with Issa Lopez returning? If she doesn't return, what happens to True Detective? Do they just go back to the drawing board? Do they sit it on the shelf for another while longer? Because again, it's been 10 years since season one came out. There's only been four right. seasons. I would rather them put this back on the shelf than sit through another season of this. So you don't, you don't have so. faith in Issa Lopez then? Not even a little bit. Okay. Because the thing now, is, it's not like the acting was bad. I think they were great. Yeah, sure. But I think the casting the was fine is, too. The casting was great. I mean, yeah. like Kavik and Pete, they yeah. were great. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, Danvers got on my nerves, but that's just her as a character. Yeah, that was on purpose, right? You know what I mean? Right. It's just the writing that sucks. So, like, I understand why. What's Navarro's, the girl who plays her? What is her name? Callie Rice. Callie Rice. Maybe um, Reyes. I don't know the pronunciation. Like, I understand why Callie would be upset about that. I would be too. You know, I put my all into this. I put I put a lot of hard work into this season. You know, she's taking that people saying how much this season sucked as a personal attack on her. But it's it's not, at least not in my opinion. I think she was fabulous. I yeah, just think that good. the writing was shit. Okay, now what do you think on Nick getting hate like he got a lot of hate for his views on this season do you think it's okay because it's kind of his baby right he created true detective and he doesn't want this season to reflect on his work but he also did have his hand in season two and everyone hated season two so it's yeah. not like he's perfect either right well i mean 
No one is. Do I understand where he's coming from? Yes. I understand not wanting your reputation tarnished by something like this, especially when he didn't have a huge part in it, if any. Do I think he handled it well? Absolutely not. He handled it like a child. So yeah, reposting Instagram stories so that they don't last forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. All he did was, oh, this sucks. It's not mine. Mine's better. While that's a valid point, there are better ways to go about it. You know what I mean? I mean, like you said, it's all drama. It's like, I feel like I'm back in high school. It's stupid. Let's move on. There's a tasteful way to give your opinion on things like this. For sure. I will say, you know, the views did hit a season high for the finale, which isn't uncommon for finales. 3.2 right. million viewers watched live for the season finale. That's a number that HBO looked at and they were like, oh, okay. Then if we come back with Issa Lopez, we're going to get that same number or more next time. So I think that's where they're coming from. Yeah. And, and the thing is, it got really good reviews and I don't get it. I don't understand. What are these people watching that I'm not, you know? Let us know in the comments. Are you okay with Issa Lopez returning? What do you think about the drama between Callie and Nick? Are you excited for season five? You know, personally, more True Detective? Okay, I'm in. I'm going to watch it regardless. Hopefully it's better than this season. We'll see what happens. We'll see how it plays out. I'm not going to not give next season a shot just because yeah. I didn't like this one. It might be kind of hard to separate my biases from that, but I mean, I'm still going to still gonna at least watch it, you know? Yeah. Everyone deserves a check, second chance, right? Yeah, going with an open mind. Maybe it's awesome. You know, maybe it's fantastic. I just think the forced tie-ins to season one really soured it for a lot of people. I agree. Wasn't this supposed to be like a whole separate show in itself? That's a theory that's out there that we mentioned so like, in a later part of the video too. Honestly, I kind of hope that's true. Maybe that played a big role in this being so shoddy in terms of writing. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're planning on doing a completely different thing with it and you have to fit it into this true detective box, mold, mold, I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? You're Of course you're going to have to make some sacrifices when it comes to what you had originally written. Who knows? Maybe next season will be better because she'll have a better idea of you know what's going on with it. If she comes in with a fresh slate, no more tie-ins, just do a good detective show, maybe it'll be better. So Vex, what do you think? Final thoughts on the season. I, you know, I enjoyed the last two episodes. I, I did. Shoot. That's me. my that's my theory. That's my, I, my review on the season. The final two episodes were much better than everything else we've been given. So I was not totally satisfied, but I was okay with it. Like I didn't hate it. I don't think the last two episodes are bad. I just think they should have been at the beginning of the season. There was just four episodes of bullshit that we didn't need. Well, Vex said that Issa Lopez had ideas for two episodes, right? She didn't have That's enough my theory. for a you long know what? season. So the way that it all unfolds in these last two episodes, again, this is just really sloppy writing, I find. Because there's some interesting avenues that it definitely goes down, but it's not fully explored. It's just kind of like, I'm just going to write it off so I can make the next thing happen. And so like the whole, oh, we're going to pump out more pollutants. Because the pollution from the mine helps soften the permafrost. I see, so you were falsifying the toxicity numbers for Silver Sky Mine. No. Putting a blanket term over every Break single up the pollution, boys. Right, yeah. dial, it up, just <laughs> dial it up to 100. No, we were pushing the mine to produce more pollutants. The more waste in the water, the more waste in the ground, the better the permafrost was for our work. It's so Crank stupid. Up the <laughs> right and i feel like if anything it does a disrespect to all these other elements that she introduced like the water coming out all gray all of the babies that died I, like they throw it in in just a really half-assed line of dialogue later yeah, um, yeah. as everything is wrapping up i don't feel like pete and kayla's relationship was very well explored it's just like oh we're gonna bring them back together because it means that we can finally have a nice wrapped up happy ending the involvement of the mine why was a cop called to move the body is what i would like to know why was hank the one that came to move the body that clearly alludes to that there was a far bigger involvement than just pollution coming out the swirl thing so remember season one and even season three when they introduced the swirl it was all meant to be a symbol that reflected to child sacrifice and you know inappropriate activities with children and now instead it's just a mother nature thing like there's some big menacing spirit that commands everything and that we're disrespecting it. And that's why there are ghosts around, which that was another theory that 
both we were all debating and even some of the viewers were debating is that, oh, the water is just making them all see things. No, right. no, no. It turns out they leaned straight into the supernatural thing, which also is just, this is not true detective. True detective does not explore the supernatural whatsoever. You could say it alludes to it, like some of the visions that Rust Cole has in the first season. But again, it's like there's a plausible reason for him having those with his drug and alcohol abuse, with kind of the pessimistic view he has of everything everything with even just how sensitively tuned he is to the environment and the emotions around him during the scene where they where they interview clark or they they try to torture clark into confessing i just like time is a flat circle she's been hiding in those caves forever oh. and before she was born Jesus. after we all die time is a flat circle as if they had not done a disservice enough to rust cole's character they throw that line in without any connection whatsoever to what it may mean because if anyone recalls when he says that line someone once told me time is a flat circle if everything we've ever done or will do we're gonna do over and over and over again amidst like this little speech in season one he's a very pessimistic character and so he has found ways through not only what he's experienced but reading into religion and philosophy that he can explain the way he sees the world through all of these different elements that he's learned through through other means and that's why he ends up going that time is a flat circle because everything just seems like it's never ending the things that we think will happen have already happened and they will keep happening no matter what we do no matter what we change and that little boy and that little girl, they're gonna be in that room again and again and again forever. It's a means to explain his pessimistic worldview. And here they're just like, yeah. no, it's to explain that there's actually ghosts on the ice. I wanted to know how to survive her. Otis Heiss didn't survive Annie. She wasn't even born when he was injured. <sighs> it, was it was so stupid. <laughs> it was just another forced tie into season one. And I actually heard someone theorize that Issa Lopez came to HBO to pitch a show called Night Country. And then HBO was like, oh, let's make this a season of True Detective. So I think that's actually possible. And then they had to force all these. God, I am so one. glad this is not like an entire like series. I'm actually going to have to agree with you, Dan. Yeah, I think she maybe she pitched a detective show and they were just like, hey, we have this IP called True Detective, which kind of redeemed itself in the last season. And this is maybe where another writer had come in, like someone on HBO's behalf. And then yeah. they started inserting all of these little season one connections because it's it's bait, right? It's how Marvel keeps hooking people into these films with yeah nostalgia bait so like i think there's some credence to it but it's like at the same time the way that isa lopez has been kind of tooth and nail defending this work is just i understand that you have to promote a show but there's a way that you can go about it that doesn't make you look like a fucking idiot that's all because even nick pizza i can't say his last name nick pizza Lotto. thank you even he came out and said all these connections are really dumb and instead of just isa lopez just being like this is the way that he views it i viewed it a different way she's like no this is like i'm right and you're wrong kind of thing right this also is not at all an interpretation of the things that are set out in season one like Lisa Lopez has said as well. This is just straight up fan fiction. It's never really explored like how Holden first of all died, like Danvers' son died, how that affected her and whatnot. Because even in this finale, we see her pull the fucking necklace out of her hair. Yeah, right. And it's yeah, and that's not explained at all. She pulls a piece of glass out of her hair, and then she has a flashback to the car. That's out of her not, shoe. Oh, there we go. Yeah, out of her shoe. So it's there's all these little things that are never fully explored when you look at kind of the the intricacy of the writing of pre previous seasons it's really half-assed writing it's really half-assed characters it's really half-assed connections to a broader universe that was so much more interesting before this i would have liked that they went the sacrifice route a little bit more like they leaned into those elements in season one and season three because that would have made this a lot more interesting dead rose i want more of rose like she has a very rich backstory that is just taken advantage of this whole time why isn't she explored and even when we learn that it's the cleaning women 
that murdered them. Again, they keep leaning, oh, nobody's going to do anything. If you just show the evidence to anyone, if you sent that to a major news network, I guarantee you it would have made headline news. Because everyone would just be like, oh my god, they're actually killing people to make it seem like they're saving us all with their research. That's insane. That's an unheard of story. It's laid out in a certain way to push a certain narrative in some aspects, and then the story falls apart when you just look at it a little bit too close. The characters fall apart when you look at it a little bit too close. So that's our thoughts. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. We will be covering Apple TV's Constellation next. We have our first video coming out this Sunday, so if you're interested in that, be on the lookout for it. Then we're going to be covering it weekly from episode four because they're doing a three episode drop. So definitely check that out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Later. Bye guys. And we are all stuck in it.